It's summer and it's Eurobike. We're live for you again in Frankfurt. Today is, to be precise, the day before Eurobike begins. This is indeed traditionally the day when Bosch presents its new products. There are definitely some surprises indeed in store. We are indeed presenting this together with Falco. Hello, Falco. Welcome to our channel as well. You are a technical advisor at Bosch, also trained the specialist trade. You are obviously well-versed in technical matters, but you also have a knack for digital applications. This also gives you a bit of an idea why Falco is with us today, because a large part of what we just heard at the press conference revolved around digital applications. That was the focus you set for this year's Eurobike? Exactly. Eurobike's motto is Hello Future, Hello Transformation. So it worked out quite well this year to also indeed introduce the new digital functions and features. We will now go through this step by step. We are also leaving out a few things and details, focusing on what we consider to be the main innovations or the main and significant news. If you feel like something is definitely missing, or if you pick up on anything else you absolutely want to learn more about, please let us know. But yes, let's definitely start with what we've heard. From my perspective, eShift was absolutely one of the highlights. So let's maybe start with that right away. But before we dive into what's completely new, maybe you could briefly explain for those who are relatively new to the channel, what exactly is eShift? eShift is our way or what we demonstrate with it to connect an electronic shifting system with our system so that we can then logically shift appropriately. It naturally has a few advantages over the classic shifting with cables. It's simply much faster, of course. And that means I can actually shift gears with an advanced e-bike drive system and not in the traditional way where the entire mechanical system from a manufacturer like Shimano, SRAM or any other brand has to be installed and configured. Exactly, we use the whole system, naturally also using the battery for power supply it makes sense at the moment, and then we are able to shift through the system. Okay, you have now indeed formed a brand new partnership with someone who is also new to you in a way, with whom you want to gain new experiences. Tektro with its brand TRP. And in collaboration with them, you have successfully developed a derailleur system, or respectively Tektro ensured, that their shift system can seamlessly communicate with your e-bike drive system. Correct? Yes, indeed. And that's exactly what we have here. We have it installed here on the mountain bike, but it can also be used on a gravel bike. That means it is more of a sporty setup. We have installed an 11 or 12 speed cassette or something like that here. Exactly, 12 speed. It's also important to mention that it is only compatible with the performance line SX and performance line CX. All right, okay. So that means importantly for the viewer, you will not find it on every e-bike. And now you know, among other things, why that is. If I have a bike with, let us say, a conventional gear system so far, will I be able to retrofit it with eShift later? Can you already say something about that at the moment? Well, strictly speaking, we have to say no, it's not possible. For safety compliance reasons, we can't just retrofit that. And for that reason, it currently remains an original equipment option only. All right, so electronic shifting on the derailleur. What advantages and benefits does that actually bring? Electronic shifting has, of course, the great advantage of being faster, meaning the shifting process is significantly quicker. And on the other hand, and this would be the case here with TRP, that we can shift automatically. This means we set in the system on the Kiox display, for instance, that we want to maintain a certain cadence, and the derailleur then acts accordingly. And I can also set a desired cadence, somehow in a mode, if I want to. Right, that's exactly what I mean. You set the cadence, and the derailleur then shifts automatically accordingly. Okay. It was also mentioned in the press conference that the shifting system has an extra feature with row shift. What exactly is it about? Well, it's also about shifting down or up as needed, depending on what I require at the moment. That means when I then come to a stop somewhere, the shifting system will adjust accordingly and set the gear I need to start riding again. Ah, uh, okay. And one of the advantages we definitely see here is also in the cockpit area. The whole setup can work wirelessly. Exactly, it is directly connected to our system, paired via Bluetooth, and therefore operates wirelessly. This, of course, ensures that we have a very neat and tidy cockpit. It most likely appears to look something like that when you have successfully installed the brand new second derailleur on your bicycle, which we just recently heard about in the latest press conference. Because with Shimano, you have brought a partner back on board who was already involved with eShift before, but now you have also developed a derailleur system with them Exactly, not directly developed with them, but they have become partners again uh, or reconnected to our system. 
You can then accordingly integrate the Nexus DI2 or the Q's DI2, but the derailleur is the Q's DI2 only. That also means a more affordable and cost-effective version, which might not be installed on the absolute high-end models. This has the advantage that probably quite a few can benefit from it. That would also be my hope in this case. And you just mentioned the Nexus DI2, which means Shimano is also back with a hub gear system with you again. And this is indeed the normal Inter with the five gears, I believe. Yeah, as we have known it so far, yes. However, it is not just electronic shifting. There is also a new riding mode. And it is something quite special because it actually encourages you to refrain from using the motor. That sounds a bit strange at first. Exactly. But there are actually a lot of people out there who are only riding in eco mode or even in off mode. And that's of course exactly what we achieve a bit with the eco plus mode for those who simply want to generate a long range and wish to activate the mode just for that purpose or generally want to switch on the riding assistance only when they really need it. Otherwise, they are perfectly fine with it in off mode. Okay, but how does it work exactly in the Eco Plus mode, this riding with and without the motor? So, as soon as we activate the Eco mode, we essentially have a certain threshold that we need to exceed in terms of our own effort. So now I'm just riding normally using my own effort. And at some point I'll reach the threshold in Eco Plus mode, and once I surpass it, the motor kicks in. Okay, and I set this threshold myself? Exactly, it is pre-configured, but I can also adjust it using the e-bike flow app where I have the options to customize my riding modes. And I could now, for example, adjust the support a bit higher or lower and ensure that this threshold naturally operates earlier or later. Okay, that means I have this Eco Plus mode can somehow go into the app and then also have various aspects of this mode that I can adjust individually. Exactly, support, dynamics, all these things that we are familiar with up to now, so to speak. I start in off mode, to put it simply, and after a certain point, with a certain pressure on the pedal, I then surpass that, and that's when the drive unit kicks in. Okay, and if it's sort of less exhausting, do I automatically switch into the off mode as well? Not in off mode, but then I just don't have any support from the drive unit. Okay, and naturally I save a good amount of battery capacity that way. A pretty cool thing where some of you might now comment, yeah, nice riding mode, very great indeed, but I have a fairly new e-bike and it doesn't have that riding mode yet but that's not such a big problem, is it? Not at all, we simply perform a software update and then it is essentially installed. It is compatible with all bikes in the smart system with all drive units. So in that matter, there are no problems at all. I just install a new update and then I can add the Eco Plus mode. Okay, so this will come in approximately the next one or two months. Just check it out when something changes in your app and then it will appear normally as an option on the display without any issues. So, and next we come to range control. If you already found the Eco Plus mode quite impressive, you might be even more excited about range control because it's actually a really useful feature that has been presented. Yes, absolutely. I would also say there was a huge demand for it. Range has always been a big topic, especially with e-bike systems in general, which is why we now have large batteries. However, we might not necessarily need them if we work appropriately with range control. I can simply check that during my tour, start a navigation, and then easily see how much battery charge I would have left in each mode upon arrival. And if that's not enough information for me, I could even set it up a bit more precisely using range control. That means I plan a tour and then see, okay, this might use up approximately about 40% of my battery or so. So simply put, I'm now going on a tour or starting a tour. I want to go to the main train station or wherever, and then it clearly shows me that I'm in my tour mode, which I've just activated, and I would arrive there with 40% battery remaining. But if I now, for example, don't want to ride in tour mode, but in any other mode, how does the feature handle that? I can just simply select it. The screen shows it to me accordingly. Whether I'm in tour mode, turbo mode, or any other mode, it doesn't matter at that moment. I always get the battery level displayed specifically for that mode. As I said, if that's not enough for me, I will simply activate range control. With range control, I can set it up so that the system always operates in a way that ensures I arrive at my destination with the battery level I want. Okay, but there are really a lot of various factors that significantly influence the range. Do I need to input the expected wind conditions, temperature and tire pressure when planning the tour? How do you actually handle that? It's quite a lot of data to manage, isn't it? Yes, absolutely. It's really a lot of data, actually. Artificial intelligence is kind of the key word here. So we are basically collecting all these stats and data. The system continuously learns as I ride. 
Every ride I take is a learning experience for the system, and it stores information. And accordingly, the number I see there, that percentage display of my battery, is indeed very, very clearly defined and will be adhered to accordingly. So the system continuously and effectively learns with me and my ride. Okay, but that also means you need to be a bit patient at the very beginning because the system first needs to gather data or the algorithm needs to gather data. At the beginning, it's, let's say, not so smart, but it learns with every ride. And then the forecasts also improve, if I've understood that correctly. They are already pretty good at the beginning, but they naturally become much more accurate. That's how I wanted to put it. The app already had a lot of features. We might go into more detail in extra videos, providing further explanations and additional insights. Bosch has announced many new statistics for the coming months, which will allow you to see many interesting facts and detailed information after your ride. You guys break it down really well, I believe. Which riding modes, how I use them, and also how it works with the input between what I put in as muscle power into the system and what the motor provides. You have taken on quite a lot and somehow polished it up a bit more and more. Okay, Falco, thank you for taking the time. Thank you all for watching. It would be best to subscribe to the channel as there will be another video about the highlights we'll experience here at the Eurobike 2024 in the coming days. If you don't have time to watch it, it definitely won't go anywhere. So ride your bike, have fun, stay safe and enjoy. As I said, thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you again very soon.